West Africa and Islamic terrorism. Uh, Dr. Madhu, let's uh, pick up where we left off uh, the uh, first part of the mm -hmm. uh, show and to have you to uh, sort of inform our audience in terms of all of the killing that uh, you say has happened over the last three, three weeks mm -hmm. that the world is not aware of and mm -hmm. it, 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 evidently the world does not care about. Talk from it mm -hmm. from that perspective. Yeah, uh, you know, this, this killing has been going on now for three weeks, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. Like I said before, the 1960, you know, seven, you know, 70 civil war in Nigeria was an outgrowth of internal Islamic terrorism against, you know, citizens of Nigeria, you know, sponsored by the government of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a coup, a military coup in 1966. Those who took over didn't, you know, stop uh, taking over the government. They, you know, incited the northern Muslims to start slaughtering Christians in the north, who were predominantly Igbo mm -hmm. at that particular time. You know, the Igbos got tired of it and mm -hmm. decided they want to be their own country. Mm -hmm. And that's why I related to the Ku Klux Klan in the United States. I mean, when they were running around the southern parts of this country, mm -hmm. harassing black folks and killing black folks, you know, a lot of black folks decided to buy guns for themselves and protect themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you do not just sit down and mm -hmm. allow yourself to be killed. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it. So that was internal terrorism. Mm -hmm. The world did not take notice. Mm -hmm. They did not care. Mm -hmm. But now that, you know, this has happened, mm -hmm. they are taking notice. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? When people are slaughtering others mm -hmm. and nothing is done, mm -hmm. since 1954, mm -hmm. when this has started, not a soul has been prosecuted. Not mm -hmm. one of those terrorists has been prosecuted. Mm -hmm. Exactly, not one mm -hmm. has been prosecuted. Now, that gave them license to keep mm -hmm. killing whenever they get mad, mm -hmm. because nothing will happen. Okay, mm -hmm. now, let's fast forward to what's happening now. Mm -hmm. Where is the president of the country? Mm -hmm. What's the president of Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Since November 23rd, not a soul has seen him. Okay, not one person says they have seen him with their two eyes. You, uh, you, you, okay. you have to explain that to the world, Dr. Okay. Madhu, because, uh, I mean, uh, how in the world does a president go missing? I mean... Only in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Nigeria. Only in Alice in Wonderland exactly. it, it appears. But I, 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 what, since November 23rd, supposedly he, he is sick. He went on medical treatment to Saudi Arabia since November 23rd. Did not hand over to his vice president, nothing. So the country has been adrift since then. Okay? The members of his family and members of those who surround him refused okay, to hand over to the vice president. It was only a week ago that a bunch of clowns, that's what I call them, who call themselves members of the Nigerian National Assembly, mm -hmm. that's our own Congress, mm -hmm. got fed up with it and decided to empower the Vice President to act as acting president. Mm -hmm. Before then, the country was at risk. Not one person was in charge. When this thing happened in December, President Obama tried to get in touch with Yaradua. I said, call to talk with him. They couldn't find him. <laughs> president of the United States called to talk to the President of Nigeria exactly. and was unable to, uh, to could, get in touch with him. Couldn't find him. Okay? Couldn't talk to him. Secretary of State tried, couldn't talk to anybody. Okay? So, so this is exactly what it is. Now, and you're saying that all of this is connected to Islamic terrorism? Well, if the president is not there and this is happening, who is running the country? Who is running the country? The president is the commander-in-chief of the armed That's forces. That's right. That's right. Okay? Who is giving orders to the security service to do this and not do this? Yeah, who is there? The vice president has been enfeebled, you know, since then because he couldn't do anything mm -hmm. himself. You know, he didn't have authority as president mm -hmm. or acting or commander-in-chief of the armed forces to do anything. It was only a week ago that this happened. Now, what, is, what, what, what are the consequences of this? We know that the Nigerian police is very, very inefficient mm -hmm. and very corrupt anyway to begin with. Now, previously, Nigeria had an efficient police service. In fact, the, the, the intelligence department of the Nigerian police was very efficient. Mm -hmm. But since the army took over in 1966, they deliberately emasculated the, the police in order for the police not to be a counter mm -hmm. to them when they decide to overthrow a government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the police was not equipped. Walkie-talkies, vehicles, all this completely. Up to now, the police is still suffering mm -hmm. the consequences. Okay? Now, we say, well, the Nigerian police has to step up and, you know, prevent that plane and coming here. i tell you one thing, ask any Nigerian. The terrorists want to get into that plane with an armored car and tank, they will go in. Mm -hmm. All they need to do is bribe the police and go. 
because that's how corrupt the police is. Now, you have a police force of over 200,000. Is that how large it is? Oh, that's yeah. a large one. Uh -huh. They've got over 200,000 men. But I can tell you at any given time of the day, half of them are on the street setting roadblocks on their own, collecting money and harassing people on the street. Ask any Nigerian. Well, now, you, okay. you talked about a, a, a narco state, and, mm -hmm. and t now, now you're talking about terrorist state, and taken together, narco and terrorism, I mean, is there any kind, is there any hope? Of, I mean, what? Well, that's exactly what Nigerians are trying to figure out now. A whole lot of Nigerians are tired of it, okay? Particularly those living in northern part of the country, regardless of which ethnic group they come from. They are sick and tired of it because they cannot sleep without worrying about when somebody's going to stand up and start killing them overnight, destroying properties they built over a long time and all this. Somebody called me yesterday from there, from Joss, where they're doing this killing. Mm -hmm. I was so furious, you know, saying we are tired of all this nonsense. Every time you turn around, somebody's shooting us mm -hmm. for nothing, just because we are Christians, okay? That is terrorism. You don't have to be a terror, you know, you don't have to, to be a terrorist, mm -hmm. you know? If all you need to do is harass people and start bothering people, you become uh -huh. a terrorist. That's, that's what, that's what a terrorism is. Exactly. That's what it boils down to. That's what terror so cre creates terror. Uh, exactly. It's creating it. terror. So it's regardless of who might be, and you're saying that it's Islamic terrorism there. Th that's, so. that's correct. That's uh -huh. what it boils down to. Now, at times, they want to couch it in political terms, okay? But what happens is that those politicians in, in the northern part of the country use these Islamic thugs whenever they want uh -huh. to. In, in order, order to control. Exactly, in order to control. That's precisely what it is, yeah. They use them. So that, that's why when they talk about, well, you know, some of them in the north say, well, they are not, they don't know what's happening. They finance them. Last time uh -huh. there, there, there was a group of Islamic terrorists in the north called the Boko Haram. That was almost three, three months ago. They went, uh, went on a rampage, slaughtering, and raping and burning. Indiscriminately, just, just yeah, creating in, terror. Indiscriminately. Uh -huh. Okay? Now, the police stepped in and started fighting them. Okay? When they arrested their leaders, the police shot all the leaders. Dr. We're going to have to take a uh, <laughs> second commercial break, but, and, and I'm not laughing because of that, but, but my, this is, this is just almost incredible, you see. And of course, uh, we'll be back uh, with our audience following this very, very uh, short uh, commercial break. Smile. And Dr. Madhu, let me... Uh